Splenda versus Stevia. Which sugar substitute is better for glucose control? If you have diabetes, opting for a packet of sugar to add sweetness to your coffee or cereal may not be your first choice. Instead, you might want to explore alternatives to regular sugar, and there are plenty available. Visit any diner or coffee shop, and you'll likely find a variety of artificial sugar options. Among the newest and most popular ones are Splenda and Stevia. Which one is more effective in managing blood sugar levels? And considering the controversies surrounding artificial sweeteners, should you try either? In this video, we will compare the advantages and disadvantages of Splenda and Stevia. But before we begin, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. Now, let's delve into the debate of Splenda versus Stevia. Which sugar substitute is more suitable for individuals with diabetes? To begin, let's clarify the nature of Splenda. It is important to note that Splenda is not the generic name for the artificial sweetener in question. It is a specific brand, the most well-known brand that contains the actual artificial sweetening agent, known as sucralose. The term Splenda is simply the trademark name for the most popular sucralose product. Due to this association, the general public commonly refers to sucralose as Splenda, similar to how people often refer to facial tissues as Kleenex, regardless of the specific brand. Therefore, when discussing Splenda, we are actually referring to sucralose in general. Now, let's briefly touch upon Splenda's history. You may recall that their previous slogan was, made from sugar, so it tastes like sugar. However, a lawsuit from Equal, a brand that uses aspartame-based artificial sugar, prompted Splenda to slightly modify their slogan to Zero Calorie Sweetener Tastes Like Sugar. Nevertheless, the original slogan remains technically accurate. Sucralose does indeed originate from sugar, but undergoes a manufacturing process where three chlorine atoms are substituted with a hydrogen-oxygen group of atoms. This results in a zero-calorie sweetener that is approximately 600 times sweeter than regular sugar. The accidental discovery of sucralose as a sugar substitute is an interesting story. Back in 1976, researchers at Queen Elizabeth College in London were studying sucrose, the common table sugar, when they stumbled upon a new compound called sucralose. The scientists were instructed to test the formulation, but they misinterpreted it as taste, leading them to uncover the remarkably sweet nature of this chlorine-infused sugar alternative. Furthermore, their research revealed that sucralose had no calories due to its unique composition. Despite this breakthrough occurring in the 1970s, it wasn't until the 1990s that sucralose gained approval for consumption. In 1999, Splenda became the first commercially available artificial sweetener to utilize sucralose. Since then, sucralose has surpassed aspartame in popularity thanks to its incredibly sweet taste and its more natural origins. Many individuals find that sucralose closely resembles the taste of sugar without the unpleasant bitter aftertaste often associated with aspartame products. The Nutritional Content of Sucralose Sucralose-based products have no calories per packet and contain less than one gram of carbohydrates. However, it is important to note that certain brands, like Splenda, include additional carbohydrates such as maltodextrin and dextrose, resulting in a total carb amount of 1 gram per packet. Moreover, each packet of Splenda provides 3 calories. While one packet of Splenda is equivalent to 2 tablespoons of regular sugar, its intense sweetness, approximately 600 times sweeter than sugar, means you may not need to use as much. But how does sucralose affect diabetes management? The impact of a certain sugar substitute on diabetes. This particular sugar substitute, due to its low carbohydrate content, is unlikely to cause a significant rise in blood sugar levels. However, studies have indicated that artificial sweeteners can still trigger the release of insulin in the body, even when it is not necessary. This phenomenon, known as cephalic phase insulin release, occurs when the brain mistakenly interprets the consumption of the sweetener as the intake of sugar, prompting the pancreas to release insulin. 
While this may be beneficial for individuals with type 2 diabetes in terms of glucose control, excessive consumption of the sweetener could result in an excess of insulin in the bloodstream, leading to reduced insulin receptor activity and potentially contributing to insulin resistance. What about potential hazards? Artificial sweeteners have faced some controversies, despite being considered safe for consumption. One concern is the use of sucralose in high-temperature cooking or baking. Research has shown that when sucralose is combined with glycerol, a natural fat component, and cooked at elevated temperatures, it can produce chloropropanols. These are chemical contaminants that form when glycerol reacts with chlorine under acidic conditions. Since chloropropanols are known to have carcinogenic properties, consuming large amounts of this chemical could increase the risk of certain cancers. However, the levels of chloropropanols produced when baking with sucralose and fatty foods are unlikely to cause significant harm. Another study conducted on mice suggested that sucralose may harm beneficial gut bacteria, potentially impacting digestion and immunity. So, what does this mean for you? Generally, sucralose appears to be safe when consumed in moderation. However, excessive consumption of sweet sugar substitutes like sucralose can potentially lead to a rewiring of the brain's craving for intense sweetness, similar to real sugar. This implies a certain level of addiction risk associated with regular consumption of these products. Cooking with Splenda Splenda, a sweeter alternative to regular sugar, may raise questions about recipe adjustments. However, there's no need to fret. Simply substitute one cup of Splenda's granulated sugar for one cup of regular sugar in your recipes. Unlike other sugar substitutes, there's no need for a conversion chart when using granulated Splenda. That's the scoop on sucralose sugar alternatives. But what about Stevia? A popular sweetener that has gained immense popularity in recent years. Unlike artificial sweeteners, Stevia is derived from a natural source, the Stevia ribodiana plant native to South America and known for its sweet properties for centuries. While it gained traction in health circles during the 1980s, it has now become more mainstream, with many commercial sweeteners incorporating this natural compound. However, it's important to be mindful of the ingredients in some Stevia products as they may contain less healthy additives. Opting for organic Stevia products or even growing your own Stevia plant can be a healthier alternative. Similar to Splenda, Stevia is incredibly sweet, with the Stevia leaf being 200 to 300 times sweeter than sugar. However, like aspartame, it may leave a slightly bitter aftertaste. Stevia is available in various forms, including granulated, powdered, and liquid options. The Nutritional Profile of Stevia Stevia shares similarities with sucralose in terms of nutrition. It contains minimal calories and carbohydrates, although the exact amounts may vary depending on the specific Stevia product used. On average, Stevia products typically have around 2 grams of carbohydrates and virtually no calories per packet. Additionally, Stevia has the potential to promote satiety and may contribute to lowering bad cholesterol levels while increasing good cholesterol. Remarkably, research suggests that Stevia possesses antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Unlike many artificial sweet eaters, Stevia may not only avoid increasing the risk of cancer, but could potentially reduce the risk of certain types of cancer. The Impact of Stevia on Diabetes If you're concerned about diabetes, you may be wondering if Stevia will raise your blood sugar. Research suggests that this natural sugar substitute is unlikely to have a significant effect on glucose levels. In fact, one study found that stevia might even lower blood sugar levels, while other artificial sweeteners could potentially increase insulin resistance. Studies have also shown that stevia may enhance insulin sensitivity, similar to sucralose products. This sweet substitute can stimulate the release of insulin during the cephalic phase, making it potentially beneficial for managing blood sugar in individuals with type 2 diabetes. However, excessive consumption of stevia could potentially lead to slight insulin resistance. Nevertheless, a study on obese patients demonstrated that regular consumption of stevia did not negatively impact their glycemic and insulin responses. What about other potential risks? 
Similar to sucralose, stevia products have been deemed safe for consumption. The Center for Science in the Public Interest even ranked stevia as one of the safest sugar substitutes available. However, it's important to be aware of the ingredients in your stevia sweetener. Some brands, like certain sucralose products, may contain small amounts of dextrose or maltodextrin. Nevertheless, these quantities are typically minimal and shouldn't pose a significant risk as long as stevia is consumed in moderation. When cooking with stevia, it may be necessary to make conversions depending on the type of product used. For instance, one cup of sugar is equivalent to 12 teaspoons of stevia powder or 6 teaspoons of stevia liquid. Therefore, it's advisable to conduct thorough research and have a conversion chart on hand if necessary. In the ongoing debate between Splenda and Stevia, which emerges victorious, let's analyze the similarities and distinctions of these widely used sugar alternatives to determine their suitability for individuals with diabetes. Preference. While taste is a matter of personal opinion, it is worth noting that sucralose, being derived from sugar, may be more appealing to those seeking a taste closer to sugar compared to Stevia products. As a result, Splenda emerges as the preferred choice in this aspect. Price The cost of stevia and sucralose products can vary depending on the retailer and specific item. Generally, stevia tends to be slightly more expensive than sucralose. For instance, a 100-packet box of a popular sucralose brand may be priced at around 386, while a comparable stevia brand may cost approximately $4.12. Although the price difference is not substantial, it may be worth considering if you are on a tight budget. Therefore, in terms of affordability, sucralose edges out stevia by a small margin. Authenticity Sucralose products are synthesized in labs, although they originate from natural sugar. However, some of these products do contain artificial sweeteners as additives. Stevia products, on the other hand, are derived from the stevia plant. Nevertheless, certain brands may incorporate artificial sweeteners. Nevertheless, genuine organic stevia sweeteners are available for purchase. Alternatively, you can cultivate your own stevia plants and personally sweeten your foods. Consequently, stevia emerges as the victor in this comparison. The nutritional and diabetic effects of sucralose are minimal, as it contains negligible calories, carbs, and sugar. While it may not significantly impact diabetics, some sucralose products do contain a small amount of carbohydrates and lack nutritional value. On the other hand, stevia generally does not raise blood sugar levels and has been shown to induce a feeling of fullness. Research has also suggested that stevia has no effect on glucose or insulin levels, and its antioxidant properties may have potential benefits in fighting certain cancers and improving cholesterol levels. Therefore, in terms of nutrition and blood sugar management, stevia emerges as the superior choice. Potential concerns. Both products seem to have a generally safe profile. Nonetheless, a study conducted on mice suggested that sucralose might have adverse effects on gut bacteria, although further investigation is required to confirm its impact on humans. Additionally, using Splenda in high temperature cooking could potentially release carcinogenic substances, necessitating more research. Conversely, there is currently no evidence suggesting that baking or cooking with stevia poses similar risks as sucralose products. Consequently, stevia emerges as the preferred option. So, which one comes out on top? Taking everything into account, stevia emerges as the victor. When examining the details, stevia proves to be more effective in managing diabetes and obesity. Although sucralose products may offer a slightly more favorable taste for certain individuals and potentially be more affordable, recent research suggests that stevia may have a slight advantage in terms of promoting better health. And that's it. If you're seeking a natural alternative to sugar or artificial sweeteners, stevia products may be the ideal option. We value your input, so please share your preferred sweeteners and reasons in the comments section. Remember to support Diabetic Life Matters by liking this video and subscribing for more content on combating obesity and diabetes. Thank you for watching, and we wish you a joyful and healthy day.